following episode most likely contains graphic language, details of violence, and murder, and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 54 of Murder With My Mother, the true crime podcast where I talk murder with my mother. Your mother that has her glasses today. Oh, yes. Good. It's like always like, hey, mom, you got your purse. You got your... Oh, I could be missing something else. I have my ringer turned off and I have my glasses. So Good. Perfect. It's all we need. Yeah. It's all we need. Well, hello, everybody. And welcome back to another episode. It's my new voice. I'm going to switch it up now. Excellent. After 53 episodes, I'm like, you know what? Switch this bitch now you up. Can get some class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good fucking luck with that. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, how are all of you? I wish I could hear you when you answer me, but I can't, so. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked that the weather is nice now, and we're just on the eve of a magical summer. <laughs> oh my god, we're, <laughs> we're both like, did we do some like, kind of hippie Dad, zen? spike some ecstasy yeah. in, our, <laughs> in our nothing, and just the air. <laughs> oh, uh, well. I guess we're just both happy in life. Yeah, well I'm soaking up every minute. Excellent, me too. Especially because I could be murdered at any second. Why? I don't, I don't know. I just, you know, that's what, that's the morbid truth. I don't yeah, know. I mean, I guess it is true. But maybe not even murdered, like car accident. Well, we never or, know. Yeah. We do never know for sure. You never know. Um, Living every day to its fucking s- fullest. Yeah. Speaking of that, there was a woman in lumby british columbia oh t- mom's in charge of the episode today yeah. so we're just jumping, jumping right, right in. into the current events so uh really yeah so current efficient. events um there's a woman in lumby which is an area in the okanagan in our province of british columbia uh named tatiana who was witnessed to be kidnapped by her ex-husband while walking and uh, her her current boyfriend, her children, uh, had been all over social media posting pictures. They knew she had been kidnapped. They knew the car. They knew all of this information. Obviously, they're completely hysterical. Yeah. Um, and they found her, and she was deceased. So... That's terrible enough, but then uh, they... Took Let me the, guess, they don't have enough well, evidence. No, they took, they did take him into custody. They found the car, they took him into custody, and then they released him. Mm. I'm so, so super surprised I almost yeah. fainted right I there. Know. That's the thing is this is like, it's like waking up and it's like Groundhog Day. It's like every time somebody is murdered, clearly by their husband, domestic partner, ex-husband, it's like, okay, sorry, we're going to just let you go till we have more evidence. But it's like someone witnessed her. <laughs> yeah. Being abducted by and him. also, I mean, they knew they know who the guy is and all of that, and like they found her deceased after he was witness being taken or he was witness taking her. And the the worst How part more is clear cut. Can it get like? Well, and the worst part is is when they arrested him. I mean, I don't know the history, but I'm pretty sure he was like constantly harassing, not yeah. not happy that they weren't together anymore. But uh, when they arrested him, he was outside of her house where her kids were so oh. that's fucked up lumby well i hope that they really find more evidence against him so that they can move forward with charges well, or do they need or, like a movie of him doing it like well, i don't know they already have eyewitnesses of her being abducted by exactly. him so but again you look at all the other cases we've covered in the last little while of domestic partner violence and previous domestic partner violence or whatever but it's like if it's just the way of the canadian justice system that's why i am dating an american yes mom is dating an american (laughs) you've turned a new leaf yeah a new american leaf i'm an american you're (laughs) i'm an american you're bringing the canadian spin to it perfect yeah so uh other than that i know we had um, a, a bunch of stabbings in Australia recently. Yeah, we don't know terrible. much about that, but Dan just filled us in. So he's up with the current events. We're going to get him a chair to come sit. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. So I can read all about it. Yeah, I 
don't have much for current events. There's some stuff I wanted to touch on, but again, this episode we had to release a little bit later, um, just again, life. And then next month will be even later because mom and my son are taken off to Japan. So she's practicing <laughs> already. Like, yeah. So that's super exciting. I'm a little bit nervous, but. Uh, well, uh, I wanted to take him last year with me to Costa Rica, but also a little bit nervous. I was not allowed to because Tanika did not trust that I would come back alive. So I, so I just let you go on your own. I proved myself. (laughs) And now I asked him, I actually asked him, uh, without Tanika's permission, where the place in the world that he would like to go to the most is, uh, because I believe that instilling, um, travel, morals or travel well, cool desires the into a, yeah. the world and yeah it's cool to see like other yeah the country staying in canada yeah no it's cool to see other countries and other people's the way people live and the way the cultures of the world yeah and- to appreciate everybody's diversities is so important and he actually chose tokyo he chose japan yeah. and i was like yeah, sure, choice. we can do it. And then I told Danique after. I well, He's obsessed with Shiba Inus, and I think that's the whole, like, the trajectory was, like, Shiba Inu. Yeah. And then, like, manga. I know, I'm pretty sure I called it manga before, and he's like, Yeah, he's manga. already laughed at me so many times yeah, about everything. Yeah, so I'm old now. So but we're doing the research, trends. and there's some fucking crazy stuff there. Like, yeah. you can fish at, at a restaurant and catch a fish, and they'll Eat make it. it for you. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> foot massage restaurants there's a lot of cafes is what i'm picking yeah. up like you guys are gonna go to the shiba inu cafe number one the capybara yeah and i think that's cafe. just like i don't even know if that's cruel or not but they have all these big rodents where well, you don't can kick them or anything yeah <laughs> they, just, like, they look happy them. in the yeah, tiktok videos <laughs> yes a lot of tiktok videos but i mean they exchange. have some outlandish things like they have a penguin cafe and they have uh they have a lot of cafes yeah. like it's like a lot of themed cafes so. uh and just a lot of really cool food Mm -hmm. jealous and just a lot of stuff to see like the 3d billboards even and everything's so futuristic and um and the history is so rich you know and the history is so interesting and there's so many stories and we're staying in asakusa which i couldn't say at first either uh which is the area where there's all the traditional temples and stuff like that mixed with the street markets and the other cool stuff yeah Yeah, it will be a good time yeah i'm excited for you guys again nervous but that's okay yes that will subside he turns he turns 12 um two days before we go so yeah super stoked deodorant like a math yeah Yeah. (laughs) should be good when we have our yeah get some comfy shoes for all your steps so you guys got to do yeah we're good so we're gonna be uh yeah releasing a little bit later next month also yeah. so please bear with us bear while, with us be patient you guys are always patient fun. you guys are great yeah. so and if you're not we just don't read the message yeah we just ignore <laughs> it i just swipe um but speaking of 12 year olds because i think that's a good segue so i'm <laughs> gonna is. have a 12 year old which again i don't know if like something is going on with the moon my hormones who knows but i'm nervous about a lot of things but this episode when we were doing the ep- the uh, research for this episode mom chose this episode but it is one that we have wanted to do from the minute we started this podcast so this episode is about a 12 year old girl who with the help of her 23 year old 300 year old actually sorry werewolf boyfriend murders her parents and her little brother worst fear of my life yeah I mean when you have a 12 year old I mean I was a fucking asshole when I was 12 I was oh I maybe wasn't too bad at 12 I was just starting out at 12 but (laughs) two years later you lived with my dad at 14 I lived with my 20 year old boyfriend (laughs) yeah and I was like uh, there are a lot of things that I can relate to with this girl yeah but I never took it that far obviously yeah yeah good thing yeah. But I also, and as you guys know, because we've discussed it on, comes up on a lot of episodes, but adolescence and just finding your way and rebelling and, you know, all of that, like we can really, I mean, you can definitely test it for me because I yeah. wasn't, I was just chilling and in your ovary at that time. But I mean, we come from a long line of wild women for sure. Yeah. Uh, I know that might be hard we to believe. We were burned as witches, actually. Everyone. Yeah, we were apparently burned as witches. Yeah, in our bloodline. Who fucking knows? Someone <laughs> just probably made an excuse to <laughs> justify why we were so... I have 19,000 relatives on 23andMe. Oh. Weird. 
But I do. Anyway, I do. I have so many. Not any ones that I want to. All from your dad? Probably. <laughs> They're probably all my siblings. <laughs> Sorry, dad. Uh, yeah, so I think like th- this is definitely something that we totally can yeah, there's a lot relate of... to for sure. No, I mean, there is a lot of it. Um, and then there's a lot not because like there's no, you yeah. know, the whole murder thing. Yeah. Not. Well, but. I mean, I was pretty evil to my dad had some wives and I was pretty evil to a yeah. couple of them. For but sure. I heard they weren't even that nice. So. No, they weren't. No, but it's my justification. At least you didn't murder them. So with that, <laughs> let's <laughs> hop right into the episode. Mom, it's all you. So today we're going to talk about the case of the Richardson family murders. Um, Let's set the stage a little bit. On April 23rd, 2006, a young boy named Garrett was excited to go play with his neighbor, an eight-year-old friend, Jacob Richardson. He saw that his friend's dad's truck was in the driveway, so he went over to play. All of a sudden... He came running back and said, Mommy, there are bodies at Jacob's house with blood all over them. And uh, wanted his mom to come over and help him because of what he'd seen through the window. And if my kid came up to me like, what? I mean, I'd be like, like well, we would, yeah. over there. But I mean, do you really think like, yeah, OK, Garrett, of course, you know, yeah. as an eight year old, like wild imaginations, yeah. like and then like Jesus Christ, Garrett. And then yeah. it's true. Uh, So Garrett's mom went to check it out and saw um, Jacob's dad in his black uh, underwear, basically, laying on the floor, covered in blood through the basement window. And then she looked over and saw um, Jacob's mom, Deborah, also on the floor, covered in blood. uh, And they looked like they were dead. So Garrett's mom called the police and obviously. so when the police came, they obviously were like, oh, my God, they went in and they discovered that not only were the mom and the dad dead, but the little brother or Jacob, Jacob the friend of Garrett, was also dead in his bed. But they looked around and they could see family photos. And by all the neighbors, you know, they were like, they also have a 12 year old daughter, yep. Jasmine. And Jasmine was nowhere to be found. So and at that time, they were thinking like Jasmine must be kidnapped. Someone broke or in, murdered, yeah, murdered, killed everybody. They yeah. must have done it to take this girl. They mm-hmm. had no idea. And this is in Canada, you guys. Yes. This is in Medicine Hat, Alberta. Yes, which is in Alberta, Canada, far enough away from us, but it's but, not. But yeah, I mean, it's not like some crazy thing no. that happened in Florida or somewhere where you no. know. And this was like a super small, it's a super, like, it's not so small, but it's like a, you know, people, neighbors are friendly. No one locks their doors. It's like, hey, and then that's something that happens. And now the little girl's missing and she's 12. So you think, obviously she probably was the motive for the the murders in the first place. Yeah, and this was, this was like back in the days before we had the alerts, you know, not Mm -hmm. very many people even had cell phones really. Yeah. So the Richardson family was, by all accounts, a very normal and happy family. The parents had met, and although they had struggled with substance abuse in the past, they were completely fine and normal sober people at this time. So there's different... uh, This happens. In our research, there's different accounts. Some people said that they met at the gym. Some people said that they met at rehab, which... Anyone, I mean, they met. Maybe it was the gym at rehab. Maybe. But, I mean, it goes... To like to all the accounts say that by the time they had their kids and yeah. they got married and everything, they they were both sober. Sometimes living. you go through shit and yeah. then you have to find yourself. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, me neither. But yeah, I, at the time they had their children, they had settled. They had so they were sober. They you know it was they were like a normal family next door with a little like boy even more and a little normal girl. than usual. Yeah, so. Um, the father, Mark, was 42, and the mother was 48, and they had two children, 12-year-old Jasmine and 8-year-old Jacob. Um, they met in 1990, and they were soon married in Toronto, and eventually they moved out to Medicine Hat about 15 years later. By all accounts, Mark was a family man that had a career in engineering, and Deborah was a spiritual and gregarious woman ahead of her time spiritually. Like, she was doing Reiki already, mm-hmm. and... 
Um, back in those days, a lot of people were not. So, no. she was uh, into Wicca. She was into Wicca, which she I was, know back then was more popular because I remember my cousin Janelle. She was like super into Wicca and like she had this Wicca book, and so that was kind of more about Reiki spiritual healing. Yeah. I think she had her basement was like converted into like a healing room. Like yeah. there was one. She was room. very progressive for the mm. times, for sure. They're both described as like the nicest people you could ever meet yeah. great parents and even some things we touch on this episode it's like wow like that's the great a good way to go about it and you know especially dealing with like shithead kids <laughs> like you know you can be like you're grounded you're this that's not what you see here you see like they are very progressive they're very like trying to be understanding and you know yeah. we've all been kids so we all know kind of the growing pains of going through early adolescence and being like a tween or what because she wasn't even 13 she was 12 and a half well and I think things started to change for her when she was around 11 like mm -hmm. I think she went into her puberty really <laughs> yeah. young which we can both yeah. And, yeah and they say that the earlier a woman goes into puberty the crazier they are like you don't have the mental faculties to deal with it at the time no, and you have these hormones coursing through your body that make yeah. you fucking nuts yeah and when you have a full bush at nine, then yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that was. Was it me? Was it you? Was it Jasmine? Was it both of us? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Thanks all for the genetics. <laughs> so even at a young age, Jasmine looked much older than she was. When you see pictures of her, she looks like again she was twelve. Yeah, she oh, looks she's tall. She's beautiful. Yes, and she wore a lot of eyeliner. There's a lot of eyeliner, so but I can you. attest to that because I fucking circled my waterline <laughs> like a motherfucker like you couldn't even see my eyes they were so like well I used to wear a shit ton of eyeliner also yeah so, so there you go and so at this point in time the internet was just starting to become like more mainstream like we've talked about me sprinting home I'm sprinting a lot in this episode <laughs> sprinting home to talk to all my friends on MSN that you just talked to at school mostly no it's different friends come on mom but we'd also talk on the phone and be on the internet at the same time, downloading every kind of virus I could to LimeWire. And but, also... But also the internet was signing so in, weird, signing out, signing right? In, signing out. The yeah. internet was so weird. Like It was. Especially like when I was growing up, we had like the first microwave and then it went to this thing that came into your house. It was like, what the fuck is my kid even doing up there? Yeah. Remember when, when uh, Alex said... Our computer's broken. My mom said there's corn on it. There's too much corn stuck in our <laughs> computer. Oh my God, that was the best. Really, it was because every mixtape I was downloading off LimeWire yeah. had a virus. So there was a lot of porn. But also your brother came to stay with us for a while. So he probably literally put... But I mean, that's porn. the thing. Like the internet opened up so many people's yes. lives. And I well, remember... And rooms and... I remember when it first dawned on me that I should be monitoring your... <sighs> Sure online activity that. and then I set everything to record what you were doing and I really wish that I had not done that yeah I'm so sorry that you had to read any of that stuff so anyway <laughs> Jasmine's family and her school and she actually went to a religious school so she went to I'm pretty sure it was a, either Christian or Catholic yeah. it was some kind of school where there was religion and she's showing up with the sh you know her skirts got shorter her boobs her cleavage probably got more she's wearing chokers she was she was developing so she was really well and she was also getting into like some weird crazy stuff like she was getting into the goth yes uh because that was also really big mm -hmm. you know the goth lifestyle the goth yeah. like kids felt cool to be goth and so she was wearing like the spike collars and the yeah. the fishnets well and, and i think when you can't fit in with like the typical kids around you and the crowd like you search for people who are like you or who want to be you know who are different who are pushing the limits or whatever and i don't know if anybody remembers but the mall used to be like the place to be like well, I, I didn't grow up where there was a mall. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. You grew up with one stoplight. And, yeah, but no stoplight. No stoplight. Yeah. All right. Well, even smaller than I figured. But, yeah, so when you would go online, when you would go all these places, it was like kind of like a, you know, meeting ground to meet people. And then when you find it out, these people live actually around you and you can go hang out with them at the mall. Yeah. It was the best. So she found her, like, kind of core goth circle. And they all hung out at the mall. And they were way older than her. Which yeah, she was hanging out with a bunch of 20-something-year-olds. Yeah. But none she was of the probably friends. lying about her age. Like For they, sure. they, 
I mean, I was also. So was I. I remember my boyfriend came to my 14th birthday and thought I was 16. And then everyone's like, happy birthday. And he was like, what the fuck? You're yeah. And I was like, ah. yeah. But I lied about my age every minute. I did every minute also. Yeah. My dad got arrested because you <laughs> lied about your age, which you probably should have stayed in jail. And then yeah. this whole and thing could have been a lot easier. I would have murder with my mother. So <laughs> you just be by yourself having a murder <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so at this point in time, like I said, the internet was just starting and her family was noticing big changes in her physically and big changes of her, like kind of always wanting to be on the internet. And she had, um, she had sites like, this is great for me, Nexopia. Yeah. I was huge on Nexopia. Yeah, Nexopia, Nexopia was your jam for star, sure. Star, star, TNA, star, star. It's probably still on there. <laughs> so anybody you can go look. Um, and hers was something like, I can't even remember, but it, it was, was like star underscore wild thing or something. It like. was something crazy. But I mean, we always talk about this, like your first email. Like, yeah. The best was Monica's brother made hers and it was like star lit 420 because he was like a huge <laughs> pothead and we were like 10 years old. Like la, star la, la. lit 420. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so she joined, like I said, Nexopia, which you actually had to be, I think, 16 to be on Nexopia because when I first started it, it was like you rated people from like one to 10 and like you had like <laughs> your pictures on there and they were super grainy webcam pictures and yeah, it was just this whole thing has been like, oh my God, star, star, DNA, star, star. But yeah, she also um, joined a bunch of other online communities and she had a friend who had introduced her to kind of like a not like the gothic group and they were all older guys. And she had a boyfriend, like a young boyfriend, but he wasn't young. He was 16, yeah. but younger than the boyfriend we're about to talk about. But her parents got super, like they they caught on that she had this older boyfriend and they actually went for lunch and made him have a sit down with the mom. And the mom was pretty much like, you know, what are your intentions with my daughter? And who's 11 or 12? Yes. And he's 16. Yeah. And then I guess after that, Jasmine kind of was like, hey, if I'm going to have another boyfriend, I'm not going to tell my parents yeah, about no it. Yeah, no one can know about it. Yeah. So... She ended up meeting a guy through her friend who always ran away. <laughs> and then it was kind her of like... Her friend Kaylee. Yes, who Kaylee, who was really bad. Away. Well, I mean, was she? Was she, you know? <laughs> but it was that, I guess they had met up and he had a car because he was 23 years old. Um, his name was Jeremy. His, his last name, is, and I feel like because he was bullied for his last name, it's Steink, Steink. I think, but I think it was stinky. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> um, but he was uh, whipping donuts. How do you even say that? Doing donuts, yeah, with a bunch of twelve-year-old girls in his car. Like, how cool yeah. are you? Because yeah. no twenty-three-year-old girl is gonna be like, "Oh my god, let's go have donuts <laughs> in the parking lot." So, after she met him briefly, she also signed up for a site called VampireFreaks.com. And I'll tell you right now that. Even just writing it throughout <laughs> this, uh, these notes, it is still. Mom loves vampires, by the way. It's She's probably still on there You're because every time I go out. to read my notes, I'll hit vampirefreaks.com by accident and it will come up. Yes. And she also started to, started to listen to like really punk music, heavy metal. Um, she wore like spike necklaces and fishnets and kind of all the typical stuff you would see somebody who's rebelling like wear. <laughs> Yeah, and in her bio, sense. like one of the lines in her bio, I think on MSN said, I like kinky shit. Yeah. Which she you're is 12, 12. But um, it also said that her, one of her heroes was Batman. Yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm -hmm. Marilyn Manson. There was like quite an array. Yeah, like, I mean, you could tell she was definitely reaching 12. to be cool. She was definitely 12. Yeah, she was 12. She put like, sometimes I watch Teen Titans because I'm that cool. But yeah. it's like, you're 12. So, but yeah. So she was starting to hang out with those kids. And obviously, because now she's going to be around Jeremy Stinky for more time, they kind of... Because we haven't touched on Jeremy yet, but he was... I mean, he came from a much different background yeah. than Jasmine did. Like, as much as Jasmine came from a background of, you know, a loving, well-rounded family that really cared about her and cared what she thought and cared yeah. what she did and wanted the best for her, Jeremy came from um, a, 
an opposite family. He came from uh, an alcoholic mother who had been through several husbands, uh, several boyfriends, and all of the husbands and boyfriends, to all accounts, uh, had uh, been abusive to Jeremy. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. thought that Jeremy most likely has uh, fetal alcohol syndrome. He possessed a lot of the traits uh, such as ADD, um, impulse control issues, um, emotional immaturity. There were a lot of traits that he possessed, and his mom was an alcoholic, so the chances are pretty good. Yeah. She never has admitted that she drank while she was pregnant with Jeremy, but she said she did, like, Demerol or some other. She had some kind of ovarian cyst or something like that or something going on while she was pregnant. pregnant. Yeah. But if she, I mean, again, I don't know, and this isn't admitted by her, but if he's showing all the traits of FASD. And now you can be, you can be tested, right? Yeah. And I think also um, the fact that she was allowing her domestic partners to abuse him really does speak volumes about. Yeah, you know what she was capable of as a mother. So well, even once when he, she was getting beat by one of her boyfriends, yeah. he jumped in to try to help her, and the guy like, I mean, and he's like a little boy, yeah. right? Like, so I mean, we don't have sympathy because, but again, this is where well, this that's bruise, the thing is people right? Are made, right. Well, and also, if you look at Jasmine's perspective, like, again, I can kind of go back and you were the worst person because you wouldn't let me do the bad shit that I wanted to do. You were stopping me from doing it. You're reading my MSN conversations. You were one step ahead of me. One time I went with my girlfriend, Karen, and we were like sneaking out to go back to this party. And I like get in the cab and we land and it's like, I, I all of a sudden look behind and you're like on the phone in the door, like, get your ass back here. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, like, sorry, Karen, we're busted. But, you know, it's like you didn't let me do the bad shit I wanted to do. So in my mind, you are the worst person because, I mean, it lasted Yeah, like that minutes, made you hate but, me, honestly. Like, I didn't hate you, but it's like. No, but at that point, like, I'll tell you guys. Why do you want to sh- fucking yeah, why stop do you me wanna... from having all this fun? One time I went somewhere and I, I read phoned my sexually home. explicit MSN conversations. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I went home and or I called home to talk to Danica and the police answered the phone so because surprising. Danica had had 200 people in our townhouse. Who threw all of the furniture off the balcony, which I don't know why and people so, did that and stole my brother's GameCube and that's why I got busted. And so Oh, that was a second party, actually. When I got there, Danica's in the police car glaring at me like I mm. fucking did something wrong. So we can see where these people are coming from, especially yeah. Jasmine. She was not happy that her parents well, were and you can getting see more and more strict. I haven't been so blessed yet because my daughter is quite young, which I'm sure will make the loop. But um, you have the hindsight of like of being a child and being a rebellious teenager and being a mother to a rebellious daughter teenager. So you really can see both sides of this. Like I said, Kiers is very like calm, cool, yeah, collected. Yeah, you'll, you'll usually get one good child. Yeah. So Jeremy had <laughs> dropped out in the 10th grade and he lived on and off with friends until he could no longer make it on his own. He couldn't keep a job, etc. cetera. Uh, and he moved back in with his mom in her trailer. Which if you look at photos of him, it's like the typical kid who couldn't fit in, who tries like every style. Yeah. Like you could yeah, see. Yeah, he did have a lot of transition. Yeah. Phases he looked sure. like one. He looked like um, like early 2000s Boy Justin band. Timberlake. Yeah. And then he looked like he had like a backwards like a hat on. Like he was like more gangster. And then like the last pictures, it's like fuck, more <laughs> eyeliner than I would wear. Even more eyeliner. Yeah. Like dark eyeliner i'm pretty sure he was wearing a choker and like he would wear fishnets and stuff and it was like you really see when somebody's striving to belong like they will literally it's chameleon right they'll literally take like their full identity and like strip it and like put a new one but it's really insecurity that to me is like such a big fetal alcohol syndrome probably yeah i mean and that's such a big red flag Mm -hmm. i dated a guy like that once like he was a cowboy and then i was like looking back at photos and it was just like that. It was like, he was a bodybuilder. He was a cowboy. He was a fucking (laughs) whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's just like, oh my God, you've only been a cowboy for two years. Like you're really selling it. I thought you'd been a cowboy cowboy for life. All time. (laughs) I thought you were born and raised a cowboy. And just like, that's, it is a red flag because it's like, okay, whoa. Like, you know, people pleasey, like trying to fit in, trying to do all these things. Plus obviously sprinkle in some trauma. And yeah. this guy had a lot of it, but as we've discussed previously, trauma is not an excuse for you to do these heinous acts. 
No. Trauma, you, you it's going to fuck you up. But you got to work through that shit. But if you're this guy where... Well, and they started to communicate like really frequently. Like, you know, also he was very young minded for his age. Mm-hmm. And you guys probably remember your first relationship where it's like a bond that is it's obsession basically yeah. so they were talking on the phone every night they were emailing each other back and forth every day mm-hmm. yeah. they were um them were quite cringy yeah he would write her poems yes poems songs yeah and she would sneak out like she knew that she had to keep this relationship on the down low because yeah otherwise it was going to get taken away from her well and her parents now had already been grounding her over and over just for her behavior one time she was babysitting her brother <laughs> and she was like like, I don't even want to fucking babysit anymore. So she just left to go hang out at the 7-Eleven with her yeah. friends. And I think I did that exact same thing. I think I times. also did do that same thing too. Usually I would actually bring Alex with me. So I'm like, fuck, <laughs> he's going to tell on me unless I go buy him a Slurpee or something, you yeah. know. Very food motivated. So I always usually got away with a lot of stuff. Thanks, Al. <laughs> <laughs> My brother also looked like he was the same age as us. And he was seven years younger. So <laughs> he, w- he could hang. He would break dance and then it would be like, oh God, he's five. Because <laughs> he's break dancing by just spinning in a circle like a turtle. Um, but yeah, so her parents were basically like on her ass. They had grounded her. They had taken away her computer. But they, they were had, still fun. Like yeah, before she got really bad, she was allowed to go to like free punk shows. Yeah. And like she had a lot more freedom than a lot of kids her age have. Yeah. But on Valentine's Day... Um, Jeremy had, I guess he had a fiance when they had first met. Oh, God. Who uh, even he got her pregnant, all this <gasps> stuff happened. Yeah, it was like a big thing because he's 23. He's going through oh. adult problems when you're, but this girl was like 17 or 16, um, which predator. Um, but he, I guess, wanted to just start dating younger. So he had now this relationship with Jasmine where they were talking all the time, but he still had this fiance or serious fiance with all his, I don't even know how he could see her with all that eyeliner on. (laughs) But so he had reached out to Jasmine now on Valentine's Day, very romantic, and said, hey, I broke up with my fiance. And (laughs) so fancy that you have a fiance. Um, But I like, I want to date you now. So she was like, you know, hey, well, he was like, will you be my girlfriend? And she was like, I will be your girlfriend, even though it's like... Even though I'm 13, she lied about her age. But like, even that. And he was like, that's okay. He was like, you look way older than 13. Yeah, I thought you were 15, so it's okay. Yeah. (laughs) Illegal. Like, whoop, whoop. Illegal. Yeah, he didn't care. He did not seem to. So... Now, because her parents were kind of like, oh, you know, she's she could really play them, I think. Like, obviously, and who expects that this is where it's going to go, right? Well, you don't expect your kids, like, very a 23-year-old. No. And now, because I said she had gone out with her first 16-year-old boyfriend, it was quite an issue for her parents. Yeah. She was just not going to tell anybody. So her parents, because they were worried about her and all this, but they still wanted her to be able to, like, go out and live her life. She was like, I want to go to this punk show and blah, 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 blah. And they were like, okay, fine, you can go, but we have to come with you. <laughs> Which is like the worst thing ever that a kid could probably hear. But she was like that desperate where she yeah. said, okay, okay, you can come with me. Yeah. So I think they kind of like gave her her space. Like they, you know, they'd be like, hey, you know, like standing <laughs> over in another area. And she kind of tried to deke them out a few times. Yeah. But her plan was to actually go because Jeremy was there. So she saw Jeremy and they snuck out a side door and they were like necking in the alley or whatever. I can't believe I just said necking because that always reminds me of you. And I'm always like, who says that? They were making out in the alley, like heavy. <coughs> and um, her dad comes around the corner and sees this like fucking adult. <laughs> with black eyeliner. With on. black eyeliner and probably a whole lot of fucking fishnets on. Well, making she, out with his 12 year old daughter i would fucking lose my mind and he he also had he had weird like he wore a vial of blood around his neck and a neoprene mask <laughs> a neoprene oh, mask i mean i'm sure it wasn't on while they here. were necking but but yeah so imagine not only is your daughter making out with some rando in the alley it's this fucking guy Literally. And so Jeremy, apparently, as soon as the dad was like, hey, like probably yelled like, you motherfucker, you're an adult or something. He ran away and Jasmine was in like the most trouble because it's like you are literally making out probably hot and heavy too. Like yeah. I think no one's there. It's like how 
ballsy of this girl to be like, I'm just gonna she was ballsy, but I could honestly say I was just as ballsy as that. I would literally watch you leave and be like, and like fucking leave. I had multiple house parties. And one of them you didn't even know about. And it was on Mother's Day. I know. I did find out. You did because all of our spoons were gone in Alex's GameCube. Yeah. Which, True. anyway. So she was completely grounded. Now they took her computer yeah. away. They like were like, no way. You're not pulling the wool <laughs> over our eyes. And this is when she started to discuss with Jeremy killing her family. Yep. So his favorite movie is Natural, Natural Born, Born Killers, Killers, which if you guys haven't watched it, it's a classic, but it's about basically a love story where that's exactly what they do. They kill, they kill people, but they do not kill the little brother. Yeah. So this is kind of like back and forth, back and forth emails. And it's like, he would start his emails. Like he would say things like ROFL and like, yeah, hee hee and like. My cuddle bunny. He called her cuddle bunny, which it's like. Well, and it was so. So different from your vampire. Congruent. Yeah, it was like totally incongruent because he's saying cuddle bunny and hey, sexy to a 12 year old and all of this stuff. But then there, I mean, it's mostly her that's that's egging the killing of her her family on. It's her that's saying we can't be together if you don't do it for me. And. Uh, I have an idea, like even they'd be talking about something else and she She would bring up, I have an idea. Yeah. How about you kill my family? And I can live with you. Yeah. Like, bro, it's not all it's cut out to be. I'm telling you. (laughs) Just kidding. Love you, Carlos. I love living with you. (laughs) But no, it's like, you don't know how good you have it until you move out of your parents' house. And it's like, oh, I have to buy dish soap and I have to buy this. And then I have to deal with this guy who doesn't have a job and he dropped out in grade 10. Well, and who knows what this more fucking island guy would be like so annoying to live with for sure. Yeah, so they really started the planning, but he replied with a message saying basically like, wow, like your plan, but we need to get more into the details. So he was like on board. And if you think about it, fetal alcohol sy- spe- sin- is it called syndrome anymore uh, or is it spectrum disorder? Yeah, fetal alcohol sure. spectrum disorder because it's FASD. Yeah, because it is a, it is a spectrum. Yes. So he, when you have FASD, you are younger minded yeah. than you would be. So at twenty three, he probably is more like her age, twelve. Well, 13. I I would I would say from looking at their communications and stuff that she was definitely the more powerful one in and the more relationship, mature. and she was more mature, and yeah. she. She really did know how to manipulate him for sure. Yes. Because he was going around at this point now. He started to go around and ask all of his friends. Which who the fuck? <laughs> like I swear every episode hey, we talk about like dumber and dumber criminals. Yeah, like, hey, uh, how far would you go for a girl? Like, would you kill their whole family? And then, well, no. Jasmine wants me to kill her family, but I don't want to do it by myself. I don't think I can do it by myself. Like, hey, bra, could you help me? Could you help <laughs> me do it? <laughs> And then they're like, uh, no, yeah, like, I'm not helping you do it. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. what? Like, cause <laughs> this guy was like a huge pothead because just fits with the territory. Not saying you have to be a pothead if you're a goth, but like in the early 2000s. Yeah. And he did a lot of cocaine, which I don't know where he got he the He did money a lot of that. everything, I think. Yeah, ecstasy. He was yeah. really big into the ecstasy, which is more fitting for whatever. But yeah, he was a big drinker. Big cocaine user, big marijuana user. And yeah, she basically kind of coaxed him into, I think it's kind of like a, like it's quite the mix of all these different things. Yeah, and they were in that tumultuous uh, first love affair. um, That passionately. And they're like professing to be fucking evil demons. And 300 year old werewolves. Like his... um, his name was <laughs> Soul Eater. Soul like Eater, and hers was Runaway Devil. So yeah, and there's actually a book which I want to read called Runaway, Runaway Devil, Devil, and it's about this case. Yeah, um, I've heard it's like really got good. A, lot yeah, a lot of details. Detail. Um, obviously, we try to get as many details as we can. We didn't have time to read the book because it was a little. But well, we didn't have time to read the book, and like, really, I'm not going to do 15 episodes on it. I mean, I'm <laughs> sure there's a lot of yeah, but these people do not just like the the victims deserve to be mentioned in every episode. Totally. But we like to obviously give you guys the background, and I think every episode we've had, we focus on like the Canadian justice system, which oddly enough. 
ties back into this case oh, again. So, yeah, Runaway Devil and Soul Eater. And, like, some of the examples of things they wrote to each other, like, she was sneaking out at this point mm-hmm. because she was so grounded, but she was still... And her like, mom was always catching her. Yeah, like, she was sneaking out the basement window mostly. And hiding pajamas to the side so that if she got caught, she would have her pajamas over her clothes. Like, it's some shit that, like, only a 12-year-old would think of because been there. Yeah. Um, but... It's like or like making like a perfect body silhouette in your bed. Yeah, I've found that's me with before. a doll. Yeah, with a doll with hair. And and uh, <laughs> it's so not they, even the same color as mine. <laughs> so they saw each other fairly frequently, and she was using computers at the library. Mm-hmm. So one of the examples of their uh, one of their emails was, "You were a sore sight for sore eyes, and I miss you more than killing people." Which okay, whatever. Uh, can we get together and kill people together? In a message sent a week later, Soul Eater wrote that Runaway's Runaway Devil's parents were totally unfair because they had grounded her. Soul Eater wrote that her parents should get with the program, or he wrote that her parents should get with the program and realize that they these are ever t- changing times and they can't stop themselves. No, this is called statutory rape. Actually, this is what it's called, and any parent would be like, "What the fuck?" Well, no. And she wrote back saying, "It begins with me killing them and ends with me living with you." He wrote posts online about killing Jasmine's parents, and her parents were monitoring her online, so they caught quite a bit of this stuff, um, and took like. Like they they kept getting stricter and stricter, but then they kept getting crazier and crazier well, and yeah. crazier. And now by this time they were having sex with each other. So yeah. how do you add fuel to a fire? And how do you make an adolescent person even crazier than they already are? You have sex with them, or you they have sex, and like well yeah, you're adding now, that emotion that they're not ready. Exactly. For. It's like after that, it's like <laughs> all bets are off. And now this guy is you no. Know, it's like ugh, it was just cringy and gross and illegal and everything and also so stupid because um on friday march 24th he posted a poem right on nexopia (laughs) that says my girlfriend's family are totally unfair they say they really care they don't know what it is what is going on and they just assume as their greed continues to consume she is slowly going insane She continues to think, I came into her life to help her out and stop what they keep trying to shout. It's so it's total bullshit. Words. And their throats I want to slit. <laughs> they will regret that shit that they have done, especially when I see that they're gone. They shall pay for their insolence. Finally, there shall be silence. Their blood will be payment. Like that? Like, could you be like it's me it's me over here <laughs> i'm the one that murdered them like yeah. obviously they haven't been murdered at that time yet but it's like that's a pretty big like advertisement for like hey i'm about to fucking put well, the more told, eyeliner on and people, kill my girlfriend she was family. telling all of her friends he was telling his hey, drug dealer episode. he was like putting it on the wall of well his- if you do some coke you're going to talk about a lot of stuff and so if you're doing coke with your drug dealer you're yeah. probably like, yeah like, and this is what i plan to do yeah yeah Cocaine is not anybody's friend. Don't do cocaine because it's dangerous. Yeah, not only are you tell, tell everybody everyone, your whole life story. OD at this point. Yes, really dangerous right now, especially. So, Saturday, April twenty second, Jeremy bought a bunch of beer, like um, twelve, twelve beers, and he drank some vodka and he smoked some pot. Um, that day, actually, Jasmine and her parents, because like I said, there has been this disconnection because like it's so fucking tiring disciplining Ugh. your kid all the time. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake, just be good. Just like just hide it better. Like, where or, are like, you, yeah. my little baby that I love and you grew up so nicely and now you're a fucking um, cunt all of a yeah, sudden? Like, yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. So it can be really like, I mean, I don't know that part yet, but you're You'll I'm see. sorry. But it's like, yeah, where did you go? And it's, you know, you, you, all you see, no matter what your child looks like, you just see that yeah. little baby and, you know, you always have hope that they were, are going to be bed, they're gonna, better. Their they're going to come back. going to cease. Yeah. Like, like get them a fucking regular. exorcism. Um, um, but that day her dad, so they were actually planning as a family to go away on a trip. So they were going to go on a motorcycle trip 
and who's driving the motorcycle <clears throat> the mom and the dad had oh, motorcycles God. They were cool. yeah they were so cool and so and even now they were like hey we're gonna you know get back to our roots and we're gonna go get back together and we're gonna everyone's gonna love each other again and by all accounts jasmine was really close with her younger brother up until probably she was like i don't want to fucking babysit him anymore i want to go see my yeah. bad werewolf boyfriend but they that day <laughs> were um out on the bikes because they wanted to get the kids used to being on the bikes and they were going to go somewhere probably just through alberta or something i don't know but they were going to go out and do that and so the same day that jeremy's getting like fucking annihilate annihilated and wasted and super drunk they're like having like an actual nice day together the family with Jasmine, with her little brother, and like the four of them, it was kind of like, oh, this is nice, you know? And she was being relatively nice. And that night, she ran herself a bubble bath and her parents got into bed and... They were probably, they probably got into bed with the happiest heart. Yeah, honestly. like we're gonna go take our kids and we're gonna, you know, get back to it and... And meanwhile, around 9.30, Jeremy went to his friend's house and asked again for the 50 millionth time oh for God, his friend to him. help kill Jasmine's parents. And the friend said, nope, but he didn't call the cops. Mm -hmm. So Jeremy went to his Coke dealer's house and bought a bunch of cocaine and did, they said, about six lines in a row. Yeah, and then after that, he did two grams at once. Two grams at did once. Did you fucking, how? <laughs> how did his heart not be like, uh, and just stop? Then he went to Jasmine's house at 3 a.m. and started throwing pine cones at her window, probably at a fast rate of speed. <laughs> For the fastest, it's probably shooting out like a cannon. <laughs> and um, she woke up and let him in the basement window. She pointed to him, the basement window. She was like, the basement. Yeah, and so he got in, but he made a lot of noise. Yeah, because he was probably so wasted. You know, when you think you're like, I'm just going to be really sneaky. And then it's like not sneaky at all. So he at this point had his neoprene mask on, his fishnets, his fishnet and sleeves, all his eyeliner. And he climbed through the basement window. And Deborah upstairs was like, that little bitch. Right? Because yeah. she heard someone open the basement window. And so uh, what is Jasmine's escape plan usually? coming yeah. and, and especially after you've had the nicest day it's probably like for fuck's <laughs> sakes yeah, you know, know like just quit and so when she goes downstairs she is sh surprised because it is not jasmine it is a grown adult man in her basement so she starts screaming yeah she starts screaming and screaming and jeremy just attacks her yeah, starts he slashes stabbing her arms her. and then he started stabbing her until she yep he down. stabbed her to death and so Mark had heard all of this commotion and obviously was like, what the fuck? And Mark was like, I think he was about 5'10", like 200 pounds. So he wasn't like a small guy by any means. And they said he was like super, super like Papa Bear. Yeah. And especially like with his wife too. Yeah. So he heard, he came down and him and Jeremy started fighting each other. So Mark fought for his life and he even had a screwdriver and he tried to gouge out Jeremy's eyes, which he probably got eyeliner all over oh the fucking God. place. But he tried, he fought for his life. He yeah. fought for his family. He fought for like, my kids are upstairs. And at this time, you know, you're not thinking like, oh, this is my daughter's boyfriend that she set up to come and kill the us. Same fuck I saw in the alley with yes. his tongue down so, the throat. And I don't think he got an overly good look at him in the alley. And no. now he had this weird face mask on and all this. And so he, it is said that Mark fought like vigorously. Like he fucking fought for his his family and his life. And, and Jasmine at one point came down the stairs and saw them fighting and just turned around and went back up. Yeah. And he said... Mark said to Jeremy, why? Who are you? Why? Yeah. And the last thing that Jeremy said before Mark died was, uh, this is because you treat your daughter like shit, and this is what your daughter wanted. Like, it's those imagine are like the those last, are the last yeah. things you hear, and it's like, that's so heartbreaking. And knowing that your little boy's upstairs, and like, your, your wife, wife is somewhere. dead, like, I'm sure he heard the struggle, that's why he came downstairs. So... Apparently, Jasmine went upstairs and Jeremy was probably fucking tweaking the fuck out because he had done so much cocaine <laughs> and other drugs. Like He's probably also like he 
drank vodka and alcohol. Yeah. And when you mix alcohol and cocaine together, it's Marco Dotus. Although That's when you do enough cocaine, you um, don't really feel drunk. So no, I've heard but anyway. <laughs> so I've heard. <laughs> um, no, it actually, because alcohol and cocaine are two different chemicals, but yeah. when you combine them, they actually make a whole new chemical. Oh. And that is why people can like drink more alcohol. They get like way more fucked up in like a different way than yeah. it would be if they were just drinking alcohol. So he's probably having like psychosis and like, also, there's two dead people right there that you just murdered. And so then he watches Jasmine just walk upstairs. And he thinks that she's going to go, like, pack her bag and whatever. And apparently he was, like, shaking. Like, he, and he had, like, cuts. And and the dad actually did quite a number on him. So he was, like, fucked up. Yeah. But you know when you see someone that's really fucked up get beat up and they, like, don't go down? And it's I'm thinking one of those scenarios. So he goes upstairs to go see where she's going. And she, at this point has gone into her brother's room. She lays with her brother. He's asking, I know this trigger warning, this is like super sad. Obviously everything in the whole episode is horrible, but, and every other episode we've done. Um, but she goes in and he says like, Jasmine, what's going on? And again, he's eight and he was really into Star Wars, which made me yeah, so sad. And he was in there with his lightsaber like clutching it in bed. And he's like, Jasmine, what's going on? What's happening? And she's like, just go to sleep and she like laid him in like the crook part of her of his arm the elbow and started squeezing trying to kill him like choking him and it was said actually um that he got up she tried to stab him stabbed him once and then she couldn't do it and jeremy came in and finished the job that's what she says um but his throat was slashed so later on jeremy actually says that she was the one solely alone who killed her brother yeah which is so so fucked up it is so fucked up especially because it was said that they were actually quite close she was always playing with him like the difference that this one year had made yeah and the difference the one year had made in the whole family's life like remember how much it tore up our family i mean it was just me you and alex but it was like no one liked me. I didn't like you guys. It was like, fuck, you guys are fucking trying to like, get in the way of my fun. And like, Alex, you're so annoying. I don't want to bring you. Like, you know, it was very like, it's just like a small little window of so much change. So fucking horrible for sure. Yeah. As mom's driving to hope, like crying. <laughs> that was like, my go-to. I would just get in the car and drive to hope. Yeah. Remember when we saw that lady crying at the gas station and you're like, she's probably going to hope. <laughs> I was like, she probably <laughs> yeah. fucking is going to hope. Yeah. But um, yeah, so this is the best part is after the murders, Jeremy ran, Jeremy literally yeah. ran out of the house, ran down the street and just was like, I gotta fucking go. And just like, <laughs> he left, ran he away. Left her there. He left her there. So she goes in, gets her mom's purse, calls a cab and goes to the Seven Eleven to just probably get like some chips or like a, a monster energy drink or something. Fuck. And stops and gets money because she doesn't have any money mm-hmm. to pay for the cab. And then goes to Jeremy's trailer where he's showering and they're like disposing of the bloody clothes and all of this stuff. And then they go to a, a house well, party. Well, first they stop at the Coke dealer's house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then oh, and then go. they have sex. Oh, yeah. Then they, they had, had to. Fucking what's the word? <laughs> when you consummate. Yeah. Yes. And then they went all to about the, that now. And then Consumating. they went. They went to the part. They went to a party to a to a rager of a party. Yeah, and we're pretty much fucking in front of the whole party yes. on the couch. And like making, they didn't even apparently the people who were there. Well, they did stop making out for a second to tell people that they, they had killed. just murdered her whole family. And she giggled and said, "My brother gargled like Fuck. as he was dying. Your eight year old brother, super fucked up." So they continued to make really good decisions and took his mom's truck and loaded it with a bunch of other young girls and were going to a place called Leader because that's where probably another Coke dealer lived. Somebody lived there, so they were going there. So now we're going to flash back because this is the next day where Garrett has already gone to the house and found the bodies and now they're like, oh my God, this girl's been kidnapped. But quickly... They went to her school, into her locker, yeah, and found this fucking, again, she's 12, so this is very 12-year-old-ish. 12-esque. <laughs> yes. She had made a comic of her, basically of her family being burned alive and murdered, and a poem saying probably yeah. how much she wanted to murder her family, basically. 
And so right from there, the family or the police were like, <laughs> okay. This chick is not ki- kidnapped. She's yes. on the run. And then they were able to access the computer. And as we know, nothing stays deleted. Even if you try to delete it, it's on there. It's on there for life. Well, and I don't even think like they're so fucking stupid. I'm sure they probably didn't even try to delete anything. No. And so they very quickly put two and two together. So now there is a bolo out for Jasmine as a suspect, not as a kidnapped victim, as a suspect. And they got they got her picture on like the front page of the newspaper, yeah. like like really right away. Quickly, yeah. Lickety split. So in leader, there was a police officer who had heard, he was like a rookie police officer, and he had heard that there was like this bolo and whatever. So he figured like, You know, he outsmarted them. I'm going to go and... So everyone needs to get gas and snacks, especially when you're, like, a young kid. You're like, let's stop for snacks. Have to pay. Right? So he goes and he kind of, like, canvases the area and he's, like, sitting in his car and all of a sudden he sees the pickup truck that (laughs) is on the bolo. And he sees some girls get out and go to the gas station. And as these girls, one of them was, like, the runaway girl. What's her name? Kaylee. And two other girls. The drug dealer's girlfriend. The drug dealer's girlfriend. Someone else. The drug dealer wasn't there, though. So, I don't know. That's why I think maybe they were going to the other drug dealer's house. I don't know. So, they go into the gas station. And at this time, Jeremy and Jasmine are having sex in the back of the pickup truck under a blanket. Like, (laughs) all they want to do is have sex? Like, you just, I mean, I get it. But, like, not. Not. Anyway. So the girls go in and they see on the front page of the paper that it's like Jasmine's face. Yeah. So they bring it out for her and she like, they show her and she like giggles (laughs) and blah, blah, blah. They leave the gas station and they go to some like high school parking lot or something like that. And the police follows them there. They stop to have a nap. Oh, a nap. They probably really, well, they've been after all the fucking they're doing (laughs) and the the killing and and all this stuff. Yeah, and, like, she's 12, and she's doing cocaine and murdering her family and having sex. Like, this literally still, like, doing the research for this. I was like, I have a 12-year-old. And, like, he's a baby. He's, like, a little baby. And, like, that would, like, sleep with one eye open tonight. Like, you don't know. It's, like, 12 years old. That's crazy. So the police officer followed them to this parking lot for their nap and basically goes in, and as soon as they go and kind of go towards the vehicle the girls are all yelling like fucking pigs and like because they're like (laughs) these gothic yeah and they find jasmine and jeremy under this blanket with her with no pants on so they put her in the police car with all these other girls and the girls got so like rowdy in that vehicle that they like smashed out the fucking glass the, the plexiglass in the middle and like they were just like fucking pegs, which is like yeah. You should say that the police raped you. That's yeah, what they're trying to tell her. Jasmine you should tell them that he they raped you because they wouldn't let her put her pants back on because now this is another like you're clearly a child. He's clearly an adult. This yeah. is like illegal. You've done a lot of other way worse illegal shit in the last twenty four hours, but still. Yeah, so I think that that was like them trying to basically say like you had no pants on. I mean, if they were gonna go down that road, which I don't think they did. So I don't think it took very long once they had them in custody um, for, like, them to start confessing, mm-hmm. basically. They, Jasmine was pretty much just down for, she confessed a lot of stuff right away. Mm-hmm. But then she started saying, like, that she was afraid of Jeremy and, like, she, she put it all back on him pretty quickly. Yeah, and he was put in a, um, like, a van with, this part's so cringy, but this guy is just like one big ball of cringe, gothic cringe. Um, he was put in a vehicle, like in a van, with an undercover police officer who was just dressed as another like inmate. And the guy, he, the guy's just sitting there, and he goes, "Hey, you hear about that triple murder?" And the guy's like, "Yeah," because he's a cop, <laughs> and he's like, "You're looking at him." It's like very, <laughs> you know who I'm gonna say esque. Yeah. Um, but it's like, <laughs> and then he started to kind of put details like, yeah, I'm kind of scared of my, of my old lady. The best is that he refers to her as his <laughs> old lady. And it's like, bro, she's 12 and you're not a fucking biker. Like that's, you know, it's like my old lady, like yeah. she's none of well, these now things. Now he's going into his biker phase. 
transitioning from his probably with his old lady which you don't you have a very young child lady um and start saying like how scared he is of her like oh like she's you know she's messed up because she just slit her brother's throat and just walked right by and didn't even have any emotion about it and it's like so basically they both kind of tried to keep in touch with with each other and a cop had a really good tactic where um one cop was like hey why don't you write jeremy a message and i'll deliver it to I him i won't look at it i'll just deliver yeah. it to him and like the stuff in there is basically like my love my heart bleeds for you whatever the fuck they're saying it's not even really that relevant they're gonna, get married they're gonna yeah he proposes because now the cop's bringing these obviously he's looking at them but he's bringing them back and forth so that's a pretty good tactic um but in hold on like she she is saying that she's really sorry at this point she wishes she could take it back she writes this big letter to her parents oh yeah saying how she's so sorry and she wishes they were with her right now and um that she was just joking and then she tells the police that um jeremy just did it because he was undermined altering drugs um and now she's all alone, she writes in the letter. Who's like, she's just being, like, super, super self-absorbed. Yeah. So, um, he, they were both charged with three counts of first-degree murder. And yeah. she is the youngest person in Canada. Yeah, in the history of Canada. In the history of Canada to ever be charged with three or with multiple murders. Yeah. But the thing is, and, like, obviously, yeah, okay, Jeremy went to trial. He was found guilty, blah, 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 because he's a fucking adult. But as you guys know, what do you be- think happened to her? Our beautiful justice system. The worst part about it is she could be standing beside you or working at your child's school or doing absolutely anything because she, because she was 12 and a half, she was not 13 yet, the longest sentence she could get at that time was 10 years. And but they gave her credit for the time, for the time she was in there. And they also, they only gave her, she only did four years in, in a, a, in a psych psychiatric ward. hospital. Yeah. And then the, the next four years was her um, out in the community in she a group home, basically. Yes. And the best part is when she turned 18. Her record disappeared. It was fully completely expunged. Completely expunged. And she never, she changed her name. She probably had grown up, you know, you grow up more and you look even different than you did when you were 12 because you were totally. fucking only 12. Yeah. And so now she's out in our community. She's been out since 2017. Her Completely and Carla Homolka are probably fucking sw- swinging their hands at the pack meeting. Yep. Like, and she would be 31 years old or 30, how old am I? 32? Yeah. She's born in 94. So she would be 30 years old this year and like... Maybe she started a family. Maybe she works at a fucking daycare because there's nothing stopping her from doing any of those things. Yeah. So Jeremy was sentenced to life in prison, which he'll with probably no be out possibi- next week. Yeah, with no possibility of parole for 25 years. But like, yeah, he's probably not even there anymore. No, he's probably not. But he actually, I don't think he's eligible for parole until like 10 years from now, which still is way too short, like for what you did. But the fact that she fully was... Again, she was 12. So her mind, but like for me, I don't know if this is like weird or if you do that, even if you're so young, you should be kept somewhere forever. I don't think that there's these rights and there's ability that you had to do that. You murdered, you slit your eight year old brother's throat. And like, so yeah, there's just a whole lot of Canadian justice going around in this episode as well. So the loophole want to murder anyone do it before you turn 13 just kidding don't ever (laughs) don't do it don't murder don't i I, the psas i have to do are like don't murder your husband don't murder your wife don't murder your family am i missing anything don't murder anyone no don't go up and just stab people randomly don't do any of this so yeah so that was a really fucked up episode of a 12 year old having to murder her whole family with her werewolf boyfriend (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so hope you guys like that one. Yeah, uh, it was great to be here. Yeah, <laughs> great to be here too. Yeah, so I guess we will yeah. see you guys um, more near the end of May. And wish me luck in Tokyo. Yeah. If anyone has any recommendations, mm-hmm. 
uh, about something that I definitely should not miss while I'm over there. Yeah. Send them our way. Yep. And again, if you guys want to follow us on Instagram, Murder With My Mother podcast. If you guys want to donate to Patreon, Murder With My Mother podcast. Um, T-shirts. Yeah, we got T-shirts. You guys can message me for those. Um, we actually had a pretty great order go in for T-shirts. Yes. So a lot of people are going to be, uh, all the T-shirts glow in the dark. Yeah, they do. Um, they're all. Shout out to Michelle. Michelle made really creative. nice T-shirts. So, um, yep. Yeah, think about it. They're great. And yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for cases, anything you want to hear us cover, let us know. Hit us up. Yeah. So that was episode 54 of Murder With My Mother, the true crime podcast where I talk murder with my mother. Bye, guys.